Hello, welcome to the Angular Days 2018 in Berlin. I'm here with Shmuela Jacobs. Um, she just finished her session Reactive Forms in Angular. Hello, Shmuela. Nice to have you here. Hi, great to be here. Nice. Um, so my first question for you is the following. When you need to add form to an app, what are the most important UX factors you need to keep in mind to make it work for all your users? Okay, um, there are some considerations that you need to, to do because um, forms are your main interaction with the users and you want to keep it simple and uh, to keep uh, the users informed about whether they use the form in the right way or uh, maybe submitted, uh, try to submit uh, something uh, wrong, um, uh, try to use it in a wrong way. So one of the uh, most important uh, things you have to think about is where you display the error messages and when you display them. So first thing, you don't want the user to get a form full of error messages even before they uh, started writing anything, uh, putting any input into the form. That's really bad experience. Um, so if there are uh, values that are required, wait for the user to try to put something, to interact with the form, and then tell the user that, uh, hey, you forgot to put this uh, value. Um, another, another thing there, I, I see a lot of forms where you need to uh, write your email address. And OK, so it waits for you to, to write something. But the moment you write the, the first letter, it tells you, hey, this is wrong. It's not an email address. <laughs> and you need to write the whole address until uh, to make the error message gone. And I really hate this. So please, please try to give the error message only after the user has finished putting the input. Um, so another thing to consider that's really important is to put the error messages close to where the uh, error has happened close to the input itself and to be clear about it. What exactly is wrong and suggest how to improve it. Uh, there are other things like disabling the submit button when there's uh, an error uh, and so on. But I think that the validation and the error messages are a critical thing in our experience when uh, we use forms. And when you want to add a form to an Angular app, what different options does Angular offer to do that? Well, Angular comes with uh, two forms modules. Uh, the regular one, which is uh, it's called the forms module, uh, it's uh, template driven. And the reactive forms module. Now behind the scenes, they're implemented with the same uh, controls, the same uh, classes. But the difference is that the template-driven uh, uh, forms, you configure them through the template. So they're great for simple forms uh, where you um, have just maybe an initial value, one or two validators, uh, and, it, and uh, you don't have a lot of logic to do with this form. But once this form gets more complicated and you need it to do more special stuff, you need uh, more validators, you need asynchronous validators, then you will want to simplify the, the code. The um, template, if you're using still template-driven forms, the template might become very, very big, very long, very complicated, and it will be hard for you to manage it. And there are a lot of things that will be imperative. So you want to make it more declarative to understand what's going on in, in your form. So in, reactives, uh, so in reactive forms in Angular, you generate the whole form in the code declaratively. You manage it all there in the controller or in a service you can generate it according to a model that you have uh, in a server. You, it can be generated dynamically according to the data that you have. You can uh, change the value that it has. You can react to changes in the value. You can change the validators 
while the user uses the form, you can do a lot of stuff and it will be very clear in the code. And with just a few directives, you attach it to the template. So it's much cleaner and much more manageable. And what are the features of the reactive form module? The reactive forms module gives us all the features that you need to manage the form. So it gives you everything uh, about the form state, whether it's valid, whether the control has been touched, uh, whether it has been submitted, and so on. It gives you and manage, manages, it manages for you the errors. With, it gives you a simple option to give validators and asynchronous validators. So it gives you everything out of the box. And in addition, it gives you a very simple way to react to changes. So instead of being event-based, where you can react to one event at a time, and then you might um, get conflicting in events, uh, it gives you a stream of these events using observables. So you can do uh, things on the form uh, whenever the stream gives you a value. So it is very simple to, to manage things this way. So for example, in the workshop, I showed a, a form where you configure a room with uh, seating. Mm -hmm. So this room has uh, rows, and each row has a certain number of uh, seats. Mm -hmm. And there's an input on the side for every row telling how many seats there are. And when the user changes this number, then the form has to automatically add seats or reduce them. But we don't want to act immediately on the change of the input because maybe the user tried to uh, write a, a certain value, but there was a mistake and the user cor uh, corrected it really quickly. And we don't want to act on too many uh, events on the stream. Uh, so we want to use uh, things like debounce and we want to get a distinct value. And so if the user has edited this number, but then very quickly uh, uh, edited back to the number that it was before, then we don't want to do any action. So when listening to the value changes, um, this is a, um, a member that you have on form controls. This member is uh, an observable. Because it's an observable, you can pipe to it different operators before you subscribe to it. So you pipe the debounce operator and you pipe the distinct until changed. And it's much simpler to manage the flow of data this way and react in the end to what is really important. So this is a great thing that reactive forms in Angular gives us uh, together, of course, with the RxJS library. And is there anything that you need to keep in mind if you want to create um, mobile-friendly forms? Well, when it comes to mobile-friendly forms, there are two things that you need to think about. One, of the, uh, one is the design. So this doesn't have to do a lot with Angular itself, with the Angular forms, but there are, of course, um, libraries that give you components that are suitable both to a, a large screen and to a mobile view. Uh, another thing that you want to consider is uh, the data usage. So if you have, for example, a asynchronous validation, then you don't want it to happen too many times because it costs data. And you don't want to pass really large data over the network. So you have to consider these things. But as far as it comes to uh, you, the user experience with the reactive forms, I believe you have to consider the same things and the reactive forms module will be used uh, the same. 
And what are the differences between the, between the approach of the forms in Angular and the ones used in React? One thing we have to make clear, first of all, that React isn't really reactive by nature. So even though it sounds like it, you need to add libraries, for example, RxJS, to really use reactive programming with React. If you want to use forms in React, you actually need to do something that wasn't supposed to happen in React. There's no other option. This is uh, a, an exception where you really need to access DOM uh, elements directly and do DOM manipulations. And now React doesn't come with a built-in libraries form. You need to either implement it yourself or choose a third party's library for that. The forms module in Angular comes from the Angular team, from the Angular project, and they work really hard to, to make it uh, compatible to Angular and to bring the best experience to the Angular developers. So this is one of the biggest um, differences that there is. And one last question for you. Um, is there any practical advice you could give to people who just want to get started with Angular reactive forms? Yes, of course. Uh, so first thing, just go and try it out. Start implementing your ideas, start uh, working with it, start uh, uh, playing with it. Uh, Angular gives a really great set of tools to really get into this uh, forms module really quickly. You can easily discover what uh, the objects that Angular gives you hold inside. You can see how they change. You can uh, log it or probe it in the console, in the dev tools. The API is really, really easy and in no time, you get a lot of work done. So just try it out. Another thing that I would suggest, and really don't be um, alarmed about it, don't be afraid to just go into the source code of Angular. Angular implemented a few form controls and validators that come out of the box. And when you look at the code, this is really clean code and there are really good practices there that you can learn from and use when you implement your own controls and your own validators. So don't be afraid, just go to the uh, GitHub, to the Angular repository and take a look. Uh, really recommended. That sounds very promising for new users. So this was our talk with Shmuela Jacobs at the Angular Days. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.